Hello guys, today I will be going over arrays and lists in Python. Well, I won't be going over arrays just yet, I'll save that for a separate video because Python by default doesn't have an arrays, it doesn't have ways to access arrays. They're kind of blended in with lists, but I'll get to that later. Anyway, lists and arrays are part of the collection data types that we can use in programming. Python ha by default has four collection data types. First one which I'll be going over is the list which is a collection of ordered and changeable items. This allows duplicate members. There are also tuples, which are lists that are ordered, which means they have indexes, but they're not changeable. That means you can't edit them or add more items to that list. And they do also allow duplicate members, which means you can copy them as well. Then we have sets, which are collections that are unordered, which means they don't have index values that categorize the data you have. Well, yeah, unindexed and unordered, like there's no order to them. It doesn't track which com which item goes in first and which item is there last. And you cannot create duplicate members for sets. Well, I mean, you can. You can copy sets, but there's no duplicate members. And then dictionaries are collections which are unordered, but they are changeable and they have indexes. They are a special type of data collection, which I will go over later. Anyways, when you are choosing a collection type, it is useful to understand the properties of that type. Choosing the right type could mean retention. It'll also increase efficiency and security. And let me go over a simple list. So here is a simple list. I called it my list, which is the variable that contains the list. And the simple way of doing it is by using brackets and then creating my list of items. And then I will simply print it. It'll simply show me the items. This basically is an array. Using brackets, it's an array. But arrays in Python, the way Python identifies lists and arrays, arrays are part of the list function in Python. So I'll go over that a little bit later. Um, let me go over another way of creating a list. This time it does it by using the list constructor. The list keyword with the curly brackets identifies a list's constructor. So let me just create a different one. Okay, this time I've created the variable this list, which contains the list identified by the blue list keyword. And it has double double curly braces or double parentheses. And then there's my list inside. And when I print this one, it outputs the same type of list. You can also use the type keyword to identify a list. I'll say it's class list. You can do this to differentiate between lists, arrays, sets, dictionaries. And apart from that, I will be going over a few methods I found, including the sort method to a little bit, to a small degree, that we can use to work with lists. Um, for the advanced sorting methods, I will go over a separate over that in a separate video. Sorting is a video in its own. It is a very, very complex task. Because there are different ways of sorting items, such as heap sort, um, Dijkstra's algorithm. There are other ways of doing it as well. Well, Dijkstra's algorithm is more for graphing, but I'll, I'll get to all that later. Anyways. Alright, um, so to get started with lists, let's say you have a list and you want to print out or call upon a certain item in the list. So not just the first one or the last one, but like say we want the second one. Because lists have index values, we can use that to find one. So. You can do that by typing in the name of the list, then by using square brackets, let's type in 1. Now by using square brackets, the number that we put in will be the index value that we want, and we'll search through the list and output the item that is in that index value. So remember, indexes start at 0, so 1 would be the second item, banana, so this should give us banana as an output. And it does. And just like I went over in strings, we can also do it from the ending point. So if we put in a negative number, it should give us the last number, because 0 is the beginning, so negative 1 would be the final item in the list. If we do negative 2, it should be the 2 value, negative 3 should be the 1 value. Basically it goes backwards in the list by typing in negative numbers. So it gives us cherry when I put in negative 1. Now we can also do... We can also search for multiple items in the list at the same time. So my list, starting with index value 2 all the way to 5, will print out items 
three, four, and five. Well, I think it should stop at four. I think I messed that up when I was timing this comment, but let's see. Oh, nope, three, four, five. I guess I was right. And if you wanted to start at the beginning of the list, but end it at an index value of five, simply cut out the index value for the starting point. And this will go over the list from beginning up until the index point we have inserted to the right of the colon. And this gives us one, two, three, four, five, all the way from start to index location five. And if you want to start from a certain point, but continue all the way to the end of the list, we can do that by simply placing the index we want to start at to the left of the colon, and then leaving the right of the colon blank. And this gives us three, all the way till nine, because this list actually just continues all the way to nine. So yeah, that's how you can search the list to output everything starting from a certain index value all the way to the end of the list. And this works in negatives as well. So in this case, since these are negative values, it'll start at negative one, the last value, and it'll end at negative four, which should be the fourth value from the end. So either six or five. Uh, I think it's probably six. Yep, six, seven, eight. Strangely though, it skipped nine. Which is curious. Oh, actually, it's not. Actually, it might be. Hang on. Let me let me test this out. No, zero doesn't work. You can't do it with a positive. Negative one, six, seven, eight. Yeah, any zero will just return a null. So, I guess we can't access the last item unless it's unless. Yeah. If we just leave the index value to the right of the colon blank, it'll go all the way to the end of the list. Or we'll start at the end of the list and go all the way to negative four, which is six. And if we want to change an item value, we can do so. Like this. So at list index one, which is two, I want to change that to 69. Dead, dead humor dead meme, but anyways, and then I want to print the list. So when I do that, it goes 1, 69, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 9. I can change any value in the list. So if I want to change value 4, I just have to change the index. And now 5 is replaced with 69. And we can use a for loop to go through all the items in the list in order to use a function on it. So for x in my list, using the in keyword, print each item in the list one by one. So instead of them all being in a, strip, in a single line, I'll go through them, print it out, and then go to the next line and print it out, print out the next item. So yeah, one, two, three, four, all the way to nine. Or I can do this, x plus one. It does not work because it's a string. X plus the string value one. So yeah, it adds one to the end of the string for each value. So for X in my list, so starting from the first item, it prints it, but then also adds the string one. So one and one. Then it goes to the next one, two, and adds one to that. So two, one, three, one, four, one, then all the way to nine, one. So you can do, use any function in the for loop, just I'll just use the print function because it's easier. Now if you want to determine if an item exists, a specific item exists in the list, we can use the in keyword for that as well. And here's a quick example. So if the item with the name 2 exists in the list, print yes 2 is in the number list. It does. But now if I were to remove 2, from the list, so it only has one, then three, and four, and onwards. Else, print two was not found. It says two was not found because there was no two. But if I add two in again.
Yes, two was in the number list. I can change this. I can change the item I'm looking for to nine. Not nice, nine. Yes, nine. And nine. Why do I keep having in nice? Anyways. Yes, nine is there. Uh, let me remove nine. And that says nine was not found. And it doesn't have... We can also say if X is in my list, then define X. X equals the string nine. Nine was not found. Let me add that back in. And yeah, nine was found. Now, if you want to get the length of the list, this one's a pretty simple. Just print the length, just type in the length keyword and then my list. Now, I want to exemplify one thing. Um, the length keyword works for any data collection type. So if you want to find the length of a dictionary, type in length, then my dictionary or whatever dictionary you have. If you want to do it for a set, just length, uh, curly brackets, then the set, the name of the set you want to find the length of. Same for an array, um, same for a tuple. Anything, any object in Python or in any con well, any object in Python that stores an er stores a certain amount of data that's more than one, you can find the number of items in that storage type by using the length function. So yeah, it should give us nine. If I were to replace or remove three objects or four objects, it is now five. Just uh, get that back in my list. All right, so Len, um, if you want to add an item to the end of the list, you can use the append function. The append function also works for arrays as well as dictionaries and sets. A lot of the functions and methods between the collection data types are shared, so. Stuff like len, remove, delete, append, count, they're all going to be used by every data collection type in Python. But I will go over them in those videos as well when I cover those other data collection types just to hammer it in. And then yeah, it adds 8, 9, 10. Um, yeah. I hate that it cuts off the list at the end over there but yeah and if we want to add an item at a specific index not just at the end we can use the insert method so at index position 2 where 2 is currently I want to add in the item 1.5 so yeah 1 at index 0 1.5 at index 1 and then 2 is pushed to 2 3 to 3 4 to 4 all the way to 9 at 9 or 9 at index position 9. And there are several methods to remove items from a list, and these methods are shared with other co data collection types as well. So, let's go over the remove function. So remove 2 from the list. So it goes 1, 3, 4, all the way till 9. It's remove 2 before printing it, so. You can also use the pop method in all our data collection types. To remove an item at a specific index if we specify an index otherwise we'll remove it at the last index if we don't specify one so let me show you how this works okay let me comment out line three and okay let's change this with four so at index position four which will be the item five i want the list to pop basically it will remove item at index position four because four has been directed to it and yeah, one, two, three, four, and then six. It skips five because five is removed. But if I were to not place any item in the parentheses, it will simply remove the last item at the end. So it stops at eight because nine has been removed because there's no index value inserted. And if I want to delete this entire list, not clear it, but delete it for my computer's memory, for my computer's RAM, as in this list does not exist on my hard drive or my machine anymore. I can use the delete keyword. So 
So the delete is basically shortened as del, and it's going to remove any data collection type from Python. And then I type in the name of the data collection type, in which case it's my list. And then I will ask Python to check if my list, to print my list, if it's there. If it's not there, then the print me method will output an error. So let me just show you. Oh, come on, please don't freeze. Okay. I need to uh, move my uh, compiler to an SSD for, so it doesn't freeze as much. So yeah, um, if I don't use the delete function, it just prints it out as normal. But if I use the delete function, it now gives me an error because the name my list is not defined because there's no object, there's no data collection in my machine anymore that's called my list because it's been deleted. However, if I want my list to stay, but I just want to clear everything inside it, basically turn it into an empty list, I can use the clear method. So my list dot clear. Clear will make sure that my list, the item, exists, but it will exist as an empty list or an empty data collection type because you can use this with dictionaries and sets as well and arrays and tu well not tuples because tuples are unchangeable. Anyways, yeah we print it and we get an empty list so there we go. And if we want to copy a list so we will use the copy function to copy it so we have our original list. Now I've created a new list called my list2 and it equals to the my original list dot copy. So this line over here will copy the original list and store it into a new list, a new variable. Now I want to print both lists. And we'll print both of them. But just to show you that they're different, let me make a change on the original list. So my list Actually, hang on. So yeah, now that I'm now my compiler recognizes that there are two lists, list two and list one. Well, it just says it's a list, but yeah, it recognizes that there is a copied list since it's taking place after list two has been created. So my list dot pop three. Actually, uh, let me uh, cut that out. Let me uh, paste it below it, and then let me. Paste it again, and then let's just add in my list plus this list is a copy plus this list is the original to quote Dasher Games. Original, oh my god, I'm really trying to do Dasher. And plus this is the original list modified. And then we print it. All right. The list and strings are not the same. Wait, no, that doesn't make sense. Print the list. You can only contaminate a lip. I wonder if I just use a comma. Yeah, it should work as a separator. Or at least that's what it says. Let's try it. Because all this is unscripted, so I'm learning this as I'm teaching, as I'm showing it to you guys as well. All right. Actually, hang on. Let me run it again. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is a copy. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the original. I feel like I typed it out wrong, original. And then this is the modified. But if I were to type in print my list two again, it prints out the nine value as well because it copied the original, but it not, did not retain any modifications. So what I'm trying to say is it's not a clone, but it does copy it it copies the data exactly from the point of the copy, which is that line 2. Um, let's see if it's... Alright, 
How should we go? Anyways. Also, we can use the list constructor to make a copy as well. So the list constructor is basically creating a new list that has the original list, and now it's been transferred over to the variable mylist3, which is the same as the original list, but I'm calling mylist3 and not mylist, so we know the copy was successful. And we can also join, or concatenate, as it's called, two or more lists in Python. This is actually why the string, did, the string in the print method did not originally work out. So here we have two lists. One list has strings, the other one has integers. List3, a new list that I've created, is equal to the first list plus the second list. So it's going to add these two lists together and then we'll want to print out the new list. And the new list has all the items in the first one plus all the ones in the second one. And we can also use the append function to achieve the same effect. Well, it might not be the same effect. Now let's see. So we have list 1, which is our ABC, list 2, which is 1, 2, 3. For each item in the second list, add an item from the first list. So I don't think it's going to be the same. I think it's going to add A to 1, B to 2, and C to 3. Let's see. No, it was the same. So I guess it was the same effect. The more you know. And finally, we can also use the extend function to also achieve the same effect. List 1, list 2, list 1 extends list 2, so it says list 1 adds list 2 to it, and then we print list 1, which is now modified, with the addition of list 2. Same effect. And yeah, constructor. Okay, so now I have a few more, a few more functions I want to go over. Let's go over the count method. Okay, so the count function will count the number of times the item you want to search for in a data collection appears. So in this list, we have 1 appearing twice at the beginning and the end. So this should output a 2 because 1 appears twice. And it does. It counts the number of times 1 appears. If I change this to 2, then 2 will appear once. Because it's only appearing once in our list. Now we can also use the index function. The index function, which I have a list of func functions right here, it returns the index of the first element that we specify. So 3 only appears once in our list, but I want the index value of 3, which should be 2, and it gives it to us. But if I were to type in 1, 1 appears twice in our list, so it's not going to show the index value of each one, so they're going to show it for the first one, which will be 0. And there it is. So it tells me the first time this value appears at, in our list by its index position. Now we can also remove a specific item from a list. So my list dot remove one, which is interesting because there's one that appears twice. Let's see if it removes the first one or both of them. It removes only the first one. So if you have more than one item that you want to remove, but okay, if, if, you, if you want to remove an item that appears more than once in a list, you will have to use the for loop and for x in your list, identify the number of times one appears, or either try to find the index value of each time the item you want removed appears, and then for then create a second for loop where it will go through each of those index values and then call the remove function to remove it. In addition, we can also have the reverse function. Actually, um, yeah, for the example I gave, I'm not gonna do it right now. I'll do that a little bit later. In a later video. I don't wanna do it right now, I'm kinda tired. Because I record these videos at night, but yeah. Okay, so if I want to reverse the list, the list right now starts at one, then two, then three, then four. If I wanted to output it backwards, I use the reverse function, which takes no argument. Oh yeah, by the way, um, when you put in an item in these parameters, that's called an argument. So I'm just going to say argument from now on. Anyways, you use the reverse function and it'll output it backwards. 
Four, three, two, one. There we go. And oh boy, the hard one. Well, not the hard one. Um, the complex one. So we have the sort function. So we have our function that I mean our list that has variables, but they're not in alphabetical order. Because four, which starts with F, would technically end up in the first area in index position zero because F is the lowest value alphabetically. We can use the sort function with no variable or no argument to make that happen. Now it replaces them places them in alphabetical order. And if we want to do it in reverse alphabetical order, we place an argument called reverse true. And that's the other way around. Reverse true is not the only argument it takes. I will make a whole video on the sort function, as well as different forms of sorting algorithms, because sorting is an entire series of videos on its own. It is a very complex task in coding and a very widely used application. So simply using the sort function as it is I don't have time to go over all of it. But anyways, these methods that I just went over, you can use these for any data collection type, and you will see me use these for the next four or five videos, including one in arrays. Or actually, maybe not in arrays, because arrays are... The way Python uses arrays is very complex, because it blends them together with the list function. I'll go over that in the arrays video. Anyways, I hope you guys learned something. Uh, make sure to save, like these videos and leave a comment if you have any questions. Anyways, I hope you guys have a good one. Peace out.